Hello chess enthusiasts, my name is Miha and welcome to my Chess Realm YouTube channel European Club Cup recently ended and I found a very interesting game from the second round between uh, Alexander Grishuk and Jonathan Westerberg Alexander Grishuk had white pieces and he started with d4, knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to f3 and bishop to b4 and we have Bogo Indian defense named after Efim Bogolubov, famous grandmaster from the previous century. So I defense the check with knight to d2, black castles king side, and now a3 attacking bishop on uh, b4. Uh, yeah, one option is simply to capture uh, knight on d2, but black has decided to remove the bishop back to e7, and now e4, white takes over the center. Of course, black can strike immediately d5, but black has decided to play d6, bishop to e2, and now c5, striking the center with c-pawn, and white plays e5, partially closing the center. Of course, black could capture on d5 immediately, but black has decided to keep the tension in the center, so knight from b goes to d7, now queen to c2, rook goes to e8, and now knight to f1, preparing to deploy it on uh, c3, and now black captures on uh, d5. Well, white has two ways of recapturing, but since uh, rook is already x-raying king on the e-file, maybe it's best to keep some pawn on the e-file, so we don't have any unpleasant discoveries. So c-pawn captures on e5, and now bishop to f8. Well, white has to be careful, he has to protect bishop on uh, e2 somehow, because uh, if uh, knight captures on uh, d5, then white cannot recapture, because rook is targeting this bishop on e2, and so white plays knight to g3, protecting uh, bishop on e2, and now black plays b5. You might think that pawn on b5 is for free, but if bishop captures on uh, b5, then queen to a5, attacking both bishop and king. So in the game, white castles king side, and now white, sorry, now black plays rook to b8, defending the pawn, and now white plays a4, with action on the queen side. Maybe the best option simply would be a6, protecting the pawn, keeping his uh, pawn structure intact, but black captures on a4, and of course white recaptures with uh, bishop, attacking this uh, pawn on a7. You can see black has three pawn chains, while white has only one, and this weak pawn uh, on a7 will be an easy target, so white is already better from strategically point of view. So now black plays queen to c7, defending the pawn, and now bishop to d2, preparing to double the rooks along the a-file, of course, and now black plays knight to b6, attacking the rook, rook goes to a5, and now bishop to g4. First of all, attacking uh, knight on f3, but more important, clearing c8 square for his knight to defend the bishop, uh, sorry, to defend the pawn on a7. And this is what happened in the game. Rook from f goes to a1. And now uh, knight to c8, defending pawn on a a7. And now white plays bishop to b5, attacking the rook. So black defends with bishop to e7, and bishop goes back to f1. One of the possibilities for white is uh, b4, attacking uh, pawn on c5. Well, of course, black cannot recapture because uh, queen on c7 is not protected, so black plays queen to uh, d8, and now h3, preventing any unpleasant pin from the bishop. And now you can see black dark square bishop is a very limited movement, because it can only because it can only hit the uh, pawn on uh, d6. So black plays uh, g6, preparing to fianchetto his dark square bishop. Now white plays bishop to c3 and bishop to g7. And now white plays bishop to d3 and black plays h5, uh, threatening with uh, h4, attacking the knight on uh, g3. Well, let's see if white makes a random move, then yeah, h4, attacking uh, knight on uh, g3. Well, if white removes the knight, for example, to e2, then we have this uh, combination c4, and now bishop cannot go anywhere, so he has to capture on uh, c4, and now black can capture on 
E4, gaining the pawn back, also releasing some pressure. If, for example, white captures pawn on H4, then we have this another combination, knight captures on D5, we have several pieces hanging. Well, if white captures on g7, then queen to uh, h4. And of course, if white removes the bishop back to uh, c3, then we have this exchange of uh, pieces, and here black gets to equalize the game. So in the game, white plays queen to d2. Now h4 doesn't work, because if black plays h4, then knight captures, knight captures on d5, then bishop to g7, queen captures on h4, and now bishop can go to h6, and yeah, now bishop on h6 is protected, so black has to remove the knight, knight cannot go to uh, e7, because then bishop to g g5, uh, forking both pieces, so uh, here black would have to, I don't know, drive the knight, for example, to c7, for, from where it will be a passive bystander on the game, so here is white much better. So in the game, black plays knight to h7, offering the trade of bishops, and white agrees, so bishop goes to g7, king recaptures, and now queen to uh, c3, check. Well, one option is, of course, king can go back to g8, or maybe even knight could go to uh, f6, but in the game, black plays queen to f6, defending the check, but now here comes a very nice response, e5. Of course, queen cannot go back, for example, to e7, because then we have a e6 discover check on the king. So in the game, black captures on e5, and now this pawn on c5 is going to be captured soon, but before we have an intermediate move, knight goes to e4, attacking the queen, so queen goes to f4, and now knight captures on uh, c5, attacking uh, bishop on uh, uh, d7. There aren't many good squares for bishop. Actually, there isn't one, so uh, black has decided to defend the bishop with knight to f6. And now, of course, knight captures on d7. Knight recaptures and uh, bishop to b5, forking uh, knight on d7. Of course, black cannot defend the knight with rook to d8, because then bishop captures, rook recaptures, and knight to e5, first of all, attacking uh, the rook, but as soon as black removed the rook, then when this knight is removed, we have again discover check. So in the game, black plays knight to b6 defending, and of course bishop captures on d7, knight recaptures, and now rook captures on a7, and now white is a pawn up in a much better position. Also white is uh, x-raying black king, and also this queen on this diagonal is also very dangerous, so Maybe the best option for black would be rook from e to c8, attacking the queen, because now queen would be forced to go out of this long diagonal. Maybe queen to e3, forcing the exchange of queens, but even here white would be better. In the game, however, black plays knight to f6, attacking pawn on d6. Yeah, that's true, but in this position, black is losing. Or I should say, White could have won if he, he would have found the correct continuation. And the correct continuation is Rook to F7, check. Well, of course, if King goes back to G8, then simply Rook from first rank goes to uh, A7, and now the end is near. If, however, King captures on F7, then we have Rook to A7, check. Well, Black can defend with Rook to uh, E7, but then we have Knight to E5, check. And if king goes, for example, to e8, then rook captures on uh, e7, king to e7, and knight to g6, forking both pieces. If, however, black captures with queen, then queen recaptures, of course, rook is pinned, so rook can only capture on e7, but then queen captures the rook. Queen versus rook and the knight with two additional pawns would be simply too much for black. Well, of course, king here can go back to g8, but then we have a queen to c7 with mating tracts here, and I'm going to describe this later in the detail. But let's go back to our games. 
let's go back to our game in the game white plays d6 now protecting this uh, square on e7 so rook cannot go defending the check on e7 maybe that was uh, the reason why why didn't sacrifice the rook immediately but here black had a chance to provide some sort of defense and the correct continuation was knight to e4 attacking the queen attacking the queen and also attacking uh, his pawn on d6 well if black would want to preserve the advantage he would have to play uh, queen to a3 protecting uh, these two pawns if for example white would play queen to c6 then we have this knight combination knight captures on f2 if king recaptures then we have rook to b2 check and after king goes back to g1 then queen to g3 threatening mate on a g2 there's only one way to defend it with knight to e1 but then we have queen to f2 if king goes to h1 then queen to f1 king to h2 queen to f4 king to g1 queen to f2 and then we have uh, this perpetual check so this was a chance for black to save the draw in the game black play e4 attacking knight on uh, f3 and also attacking pawn on d6 yeah if white remove the knight yeah then black equalizes but in the game now finally white finally finds the correct continuation rook captures on f7 was played king has no other options but to recapture and now rook to a7 check king goes to g8 and queen to c7 threatening with mate on uh, g7 well, if black plays queen to h6, then yeah, we have queen to f7, king to uh, h8, and then queen to uh, f6. Of course, queen cannot go to g7 because it's checkmate. And then after king to g8, then we have uh, knight to e5, driving the knight into the game. Or maybe after, I don't know, if rook to a8, then we have queen to f7, king has to go to uh, h8, and knight to g6, check. Black can only capture with queen. After queen recaptures, yeah, black has two rooks, but um, white already white has two additional pawns, so this is winning for white. So in the game, black was thinking, I'm going to lose this knight anyway, and uh, this queen is protecting uh, a c1 square, so black plays knight to d7 interference well of course white has no other options but to capture but now black can play queen to c1 check of course maybe black was thinking okay if king goes to h2 then queen to to uh, f4 with perpetual check of course white cannot play g3 because now with queen to f6 black is safe because after queen to h7 check king to f8 now h a square is protected so white cannot mate there and of course, if maybe white tries with knight to g5, threatening with rook to uh, f7 check, well, then in this case, queen simply captures on f2 with a uh, mate in a couple of moves. So in the game, white plays knight to e1, again, interference. Well, of course, if black captures on e1, then king goes to h2, and now there isn't any valuable check here anymore and white is going to mate uh, here on uh, g7 so in the game black plays queen to h6 and now queen to f7 check king goes to h8 queen to f6 king to g8 and now white plays uh, g4 plain is simple with g5 driving the queen away so first black captures on uh, g4 h h pawn recaptures and uh, now black plays rook to f8 attacking the queen queen goes to f7 check king goes to um, h8 queen to e5 check king to g8 and now uh, g5 of course if king queen goes to h5 then queen to g7 checkmate maybe black would try with queen to h7 but then rook captures king captures hmm. queen and knight versus two rooks simply too much for black so this so black could have very well resigned here but had decided to play for a couple of moves 
screen goes to H8 and then now we have mating 2. I'm sure we will be able to find it. White played queen to d5 check. Black can only play rook to f7, but then we have queen to f7 checkmate. And therefore in this position, Jonathan Westerberg resigned the game. So I hope you like this game and that you have learned something from it. If you have any questions, my email is below in the description. Of course, I invite you to visit my Instagram page. That's it for now and see you soon.